All right, welcome back, friends. I'm here with my buddy Daryl, and we're showing people the basics of Microsoft Project. And Daryl and Ed have come up with a list of tasks and a project replacing a roof on a home. So, Daryl, if I wanted to use this to propel my project forward, um, it seems like I don't have durations or linkages or anything else. Can you walk us through how to get the durations in? Do I just decide at random, or or what is the best practice for getting durations? In there. The best uh, the, the best practice is to understand what exactly you're going to be doing from from your from the start date to the finish date. Um, and a project is is a temporary endeavor which includes all the activities within that project of having a a stop and, and a finish. So with these tasks subtasks, and I'm highlighting here from uh, task IDs two through five, these are your tasks that you will be doing to complete. You're placing a roof on your, on your home. Um, now we have the option to either link them together, meaning uh, task ID two needs to start and finish before task ID three needs to start, or task ID three needs to finish be before task uh, ID uh, four needs to start. So these pre these columns right here, the predecessor and successors, are more of the linkages or the dependencies that these these subtasks will need to be connected to. And that gotcha. also de determines on the uh, duration days um, for your project. Um, gotcha. In Microsoft Project, you, you won't need to worry about updating your start and finish because there are certain parameters that will update that um, based upon the durations and linking each subtask together. So you mean I don't need to type in any dates at all? Not with the, Not in Microsoft Project. Good deal. So this is, right. this is automatically calculated by the number of duration days and the dependencies for linking each task together. Gotcha. In that, so in that for way. Project Start, yeah, Project Start, I think when Ed gave us Project Start, that's kind of like a mobilization. So it's like a mob. It's not just a start date. It's like all the activities that we need to do before we start the effort. That's the way I see it. So Ed, how many days would you say the Project Start would have the whole prep and the mob and making sure we got all the equipment on site and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, about uh, three days from project execution. I mean, excuse me, uh, contract sign to. Okay. So uh, the preparation would be some additional prepping the site and doing things like that. Like you've already gotten into the work the moment you get into prep. We're not mm -hmm. just talking about initiating, we're talking about actual executing type prep. So how many days would your prep be? You know, now you say that, for let, let's, let's, let's do um, for just for the prep, I, probably just one to two days I would need. Gotcha. Okay. You see what you see the technique Daryl used there. So mm -hmm. as a good scheduler, he, he took the higher end of the estimation window and I, I, I love more than just a single point estimate because as a good scheduler, right, Daryl? What's the philosophy they want to explain to us? The, the philosophy with the duration days, Phil? Yeah, like, like Ed said, one to two days. And like a good scheduler, you chose the two, not the one. And I was saying the philosophy there for a good scheduler is not just randomly choosing numbers, but when you have a window, like a three-point estimate or a two-point mm -hmm. estimate, it's always go with a higher because that could serve as a buffer or some contingency because you just never know. So when someone actually says between this and that, why go with the lower end? At worst, you could go in the middle, but I always like going on the higher end, which is the two instead of the one. So a little tip right. for your mm -hmm. viewers there. So so for, for best practices or making your, your schedule much more realistic, the best practice is two days at the most or at the minimum, because if you use one day, it triggers more into the, the minutes and the hours um, within that, that scope of work. And that may hinder or may disrupt the critical path in some, some capacity. And you would have to go into the project options like what we saw earlier in our previous videos, where we would have to adjust the the schematics of the schedule to to point to work hours or the minutes of the project. So gotcha. at the minimum, two days would be would, would be would be best for each subtask. Brilliant. 
So with that, Ed, what about structural work and cleanup and inspection? Great point. So as far as that timeline, I'm looking at uh, work, probably um, two to three days there and clean up uh, one day. Yeah, one to, one to two days, depending on the, what is the ex excess of, of what's left, but one to two days should be viable. Very good. So we will choose Daryl's two day clause <laughs> for the final one as well. <laughs> and now what is the total? You can see up there, it is still showing magically that this whole thing will be three days, but we know Daryl that that's not reality. So what are we missing? What is the next step we need to do to show reality in the, you know, replacing a roof? Because just, just in case folks aren't looking, right at the top, we have a three day and we know that that's not reality. We're spending all this time, except there's overlap. So why don't we just go ahead and let Daryl do the predecessors? So th there's three ways, actually two approaches on how I'm seeing this, Phil, in regards to getting this project to its realistic form. Um, with, like I said, with a project, a project has a start and a finish date. Um, with what I'm seeing here, we need to, um, identify a milestone, which is a significant impact to your project, a positive impact to your project. So right now, with what we see here with task IDs two through five, there's no specific positive impact on replacing our roof. It's, I guess, open-ended or unfinished business. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I highly recommend having a milestone to complete this project. Great stuff. So for those listening, a milestone is an event. It's a zero duration event that shows accomplishment. And it's not a task, right, Daryl? We're not talking about That's a task. Correct. That's <laughs> correct. Yeah. So why don't you show us, Daryl, how do we show milestones in this thing? So for this in, uh, minimal schedule, I would just put project N. Okay. And I would go to different duration days. Now you notice how I uh, skipped over the, the start and finish dates and mm. that takes practice um mm. because with using microsoft excel it's it's <laughs> it's bad habits to go in and, and manually type in the, the dates yeah. however with using microsoft project you know more you're able to just skip over that those two columns and i would mm. change the duration day from one to zero putting it mm. at a milestone now as you noticed um the color of each of the milestone is turned as has turned blue as far as the font um as we go in here with a microsoft project and learn more in microsoft project there are ways to manipulate or massage this this tool to accommodate to your project so for example if i were to use a milestone like what we did here it will highlight itself in blue because of what I'm, what I'm instructing it to do to identify itself as a, as a mouse. Mm, that's interesting. One of the more advanced uses. Awesome. Well, this has been a really good session. I look forward to seeing you and Ed again in our next session where we uh, go into the predecessors. Can't wait to do that.